for another exciting presentation of NBA Basketball. With Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan. And now time for the State Farm opening lineups. And looking at the basics. You know, the Pacers had that uh, four or five year stretch where things went south after that brawl in the Palace. But if you look at their team now, the last couple of years, they've really built a strong young core. And it's paid off. They're becoming one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Shakes off the strong D and gets to the bucket for two. And uh, Steve, you're right about Clark. If you're a Pacer fan, you have to like the direction this team has headed. A lot of talent, Clark, in a lot of spots. Well, keeping all that talent will be a concern at some point. But right now, they are young and have depth. So you can't ask for much more if you're a fan of the team. A lot of promise looking ahead. Just five to shoot. Sinks it from just inside the baseline. On defense, the Pacers. Let's find out what Doris Burke has for us. Hey, Kevin. I had a chance to catch up with the visiting team's head coach. I asked him if he had a plan for all the speed he'll be up against, and he told me a key would be transition defense, saying speed shows up most in the transition game, and we feel if we take that away from them, we have a major advantage. Back to you guys. Thanks again, Doris. Here in the first, a little over a minute played so far. Tries it for 19. Offensive rebound. A three ball. Good. So it's the visitors now. Taken away. The first quarter of action, two minutes in. Good on the shot. Yeah, three out of four from the floor, so a good start for this club. Gone two or three here to start out the game. Elbow shot is on the way. Jump shot is good that time. The Pacers have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. If you're just tuning in, we played about two and a half minutes here in the first. Number six. And again, it's Indiana. This has been the start that they had hoped for, coming out knocking down four of their first five shots. Number five. And it's good. That's how you exploit that defense. Take the ball right to the basket. The Pacers have gone 4-5 or five from the field so far. About three minutes gone here in the first quarter. They get it back. Nice second effort. Good job staying with it. And hard work on the boards, guys, leading to that putback. Leads him in there. Number 12, drops one in from the wing. Indiana leading. And we're approaching about three and a half minutes played in the first quarter. Defensive foul. That's his first personal foul. 
There's the pick. Five on the clock. Number six. And yes, sir, that one drops. He's got six. Well, for him, that finger roll is almost second nature. That's a tough shot for most players. Down low. Bunny shot. And the basket good. So the Pacers call timeout. Their first of the game. He did not look too happy about some of the things he saw on the court. So I would expect some changes here. I think it's the right move, quite honestly. I mean, they just didn't look sharp or at their best out there. So take the time out and give yourself a chance to regroup. Pacers have gone 6 of 8 in the game so far. A very solid start for them. Five to shoot. Number seven. No good with the elbow jumper. He's one guy the defense is not afraid to leave open from that range, and for obvious reasons. That gives them the lead. He has six. And how did he get that to go? Even after the whistle, I like the awareness, the alertness, and the presence of mind to finish the play. Indiana trailing here. And that one's good. Good job creating an easy bucket there. Gone seven and eight from the field to start the game. Very hot shooting. Inside. Here's Schultz. And the shot is good. They continue to barrel their way inside. And when's the defense going to adjust? Well, I'm asking the same question myself, partner. I mean, that's eight points out of your last ten coming inside. And here are the Pacers now. On the top of the key, the shot no good. Now you can see why the defense is willing to let him take that shot. That's really not his range. Number six. Cans it from downtown. And here are the Pacers now. It's a five-point game. They set the pick. Number seven. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And no question, he got bumped on that shot. Definitely no room for discussion on that. The Pacers shooting their first free throws of the game. Yeah, they had the kind of success from the line that would make any coach breathe a sigh of relief, guys. That free throw, no good. So it's both teams making substitutions here. Good on the second free throw. To the paint. Tipped. The shot. No good. Shooting-wise, he's having a tough quarter. I mean, he just seems to have gone cold. Can't find the basket. Right from the get-go, they've been shooting the ball extremely well. Well, I think it's a matter of just continuing to knock down shots like that. Um, they'll get the W here, no question about it. And here are the Pacers now. They trail by six. And he feeds it to Thompson. They get it again.
Some nice passing here by Indiana. Here's Galloway. And the first shot of the night for him, no good. 1-11 left to play in the first quarter. Number one. 11 feet out, and he gets it. Yeah, we're now starting to see them get some high percentage shots in the paint. Yeah, that's five of their last six buckets inside the lane, so they're getting really high percentage looks down there. Good strength there, just barely off with that attempt. I don't think you can fault them right there. A lot of contact on that one. The Pacers have gone one for two on the night so far from the line. Well, you look at last season's numbers, guys, down below 70% as a team from the line. You know, Kevin, they would love to post a similar percentage again this season. I mean, I think that's safe to say they'd love to shoot free throws as well as they did a year ago. So both teams changing it up here. And he makes both free throws. The visitors with the ball. A six point lead. Number four. And not sure what he was thinking there. Pacers have gone an even 50% from the field. They are 7 of 14 for the game. Good! Carving them up inside there, Kevin. I mean, the defense has been vulnerable in there. Yeah, that's three straight field goals in the paint area. That's really good offense. They've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Gets the bucket. That's four of their last five buckets now coming in the paint area. And they're in attack mode right now, barreling in there with bad man intentions. And here are the Pacers now. Six-point game. Number 14. And the layup falls. Right out of the gate, just filling it up. Both teams are, guys. I mean, points coming fast and furious. Number four gets it to go. Outstanding job there to absorb the contact and guide it in. That's how you impose your will against the defender. He came to play. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Pacers now puts up a three that misses where the cut had it gone in. The basket's coming early and often in the first quarter. The away team leading by seven. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the second quarter. All right, the second quarter beginning in just a moment. And looking at what we've seen so far, guys, from the visiting team, what do you think? And you could see early on, guys, they were going to go inside and try to establish their offense in the paint area. That's exactly what they've done. And I think that's exactly where they should continue to attack moving forward, Steve. Pacers trail by seven. Let's check out what Doris Burke has for us. Well, guys, Pacer center Roy Hibbert has trained with Tim Duncan over the last few off-seasons, and they've become friends. They stay in touch, and Duncan even offered him advice and encouragement when the Pacers were in the playoffs. Hibbert said, I had a roller coaster first three years in terms of my career. Tim doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. I model my game after him. He's somebody who looks out for me. Guys, always great to see a star take a young man under his wing. Hard to think of a better mentor for Roy than the great Tim Duncan. Thanks, Doris. Got everything to drop so far. Shooting four of four. Fires from deep. Here's Schultz. Gets the bucket. Four straight field goals coming inside the paint. Boy, they're taking it right to him, Steve. And the defense has really been way too passive for my liking. And so here is Indiana. They trail by seven. To the middle. Number seven. And that one's good. 
He has six. Something has to change, guys. That's 10 straight points coming in the paint against this team. Well, they got to collapse in there, and everybody's got to be conscious of it. It's a team effort in protecting the paint. Control the ball, I and mean, then everybody's got to get in there and keep the defense locked down. Here's Hoffman. Good as the jump shot ball. The Pacers have gone two or three from the field here to open the second quarter. And the Pacers call time here. Looks like he saw some things out there that needed adjusting and uh, wants to talk it over a little bit with his club. I don't think you can ever go wrong burning the time out if you see something you don't like and you need to talk about. It. So Indiana ends up with a new group on the floor. We're now about two minutes into the second quarter. Number two. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. Obvious foul. Yeah, he took a hit right there and earned those free throws. The Pacers have shot 75% at the line tonight going three for four. And you can't take those numbers lightly, fellas. I mean, their free throw shooting made a difference for them in a lot of their games last season. And he knocks down the first one. Both teams deciding to change it up. Both shots good from the strike. Quarter number two, we're about two minutes in. Being a mind-boggling 79% off the floor. Number 10. Plenty of room around him, and it's good. They can't seem to stop anybody inside. They got to know that if they don't make life tougher in the paint, the opponent is just going to keep going there. I mean, it's not like they'll get tired of all these and close opportunity. Number 14. And that one's good. Good defense, but you gotta love the finish with the finger roll over the top. Gone three of their first five shots to drop here in the second quarter. Here's Schultz. With nobody on him, he buries the jumper. Six points for him. Pacers trail by seven. Number 14, and that one's good. Offensively just hammering away in the paint. And that's 10 straight points inside, too. To the inside. Goes up. That's good. Gotta love the low post offense. That was beautiful. And here are the Pacers now. Clock at five. Number two. Plays it up, and in spite of the excellent defense at that, he has six. That's five straight hoops in the paint. What a fantastic job of attacking the rim. Well, Steve, they're getting the looks that they want down there, so might as well keep going right at the rim. If there's no resistance, then make them pay. Gets it to go. Pacers trail by seven. Number 14, and there are the Pacers with another bucket. I like the job they're doing, a much better job of getting them involved in the offense here in the second quarter. The away team will take their first timeout. So both teams making some changes here. Gone six of eight from the field in the second quarter. Here's Bush. Hits the three-point bomb. Indiana trailing here. Indiana. 
Indiana moving it around. Number 13. Got it. Good job in the low post. Gone seven and nine in their field goal attempts here in the second quarter. Pretty good offense. Number four. It's rebounded by Indiana. Number one. Again, Indiana. Well, they're really making a point of keeping the ball moving around. Yeah, Steve and Kevin, you guys got to love this teamwork. I mean, everybody's involved and engaged. It's just a thing of beauty to watch. Yeah, yeah sure is. And when all five guys, Clark, are threats to score, that makes it so tough on the defense because now you, you, you can't account for everybody when the ball's moving so quickly. And so it's Indiana with it. Six-point game. Both teams will make substitutions. Number seven. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. I think he's just got to compose himself, gather himself. He may be trying a little too hard out there. Let it flow. Let it happen. Don't force it. Count that one. He has six. He's a guy that will take it right into the teeth of the defense. A lot of his points come from inside of five feet. Pacers trail by nine. Number 13. Nice open look, but it's no good. Gone one of three from way outside since the start of the second quarter. Inside. Cuts off the pass. Now the Pacers moving it up. Number seven. Gets it to go. Nice aggressive defensive play to make the steal and start the break. Yeah, and I like the fact they didn't mess around with it once they got it. on three of seven shooting from the floor here's Bush money from the wing five points in the game 112 left now here in the second basket book it right now they're just pillow like inside way too soft too many looks at and around the hoop yeah totally agree Clark 10 of the last 12 points now that they surrendered have come inside that lane area number five connects in the foul line jumper there's 49 seconds left to play here in the half Number seven. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Not able to find it here in the second. He's off stride and off track just a bit after that one he had early. 20 seconds left in the first half. Six on the shot clock. Here's Hoffman. Drills the elbow jumper. Number 14. And no good trying to get that one. And that concludes the first half. The away team up 11. The Rockets. Well, folks, stick around here at halftime for the halftime show with Damon Bruce for all the highlights from our first half. And now, brought to you by Sprint. And now it's time to break down the first half for you here on this Wednesday edition of 2K at the half. The away team scorching hot in the first half. Through two quarters, their offense has been simply unstoppable. Bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket after bucket. You get it.
and slugging it out so far, the Indiana Pacers. Smart decision-making offensively, great ball handling. They've been limiting turnovers. Thanks so much for spending halftime with me. Now let's head out back out to Kevin and the gang. Well, we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Pacers trail by 11. Some nice passing here by Indiana. Shot clock at six. Number six. Off target from the baseline. And that rebound pushes their margin to plus five on the board. Solid job on the glass. Well, it's just part of what they've done here to build this big lead. And it shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, rebounding is a huge part of this game. Off the mark from 16 feet out. Pacer shooting has been outstanding in this game at 58%. Fires from the wing. Offensive rebound. The wing jumper off target. Three straight misses here to start the second half. Number 12. And that one's good. He's got nine. And if you're just joining us, we played over a minute here in the third. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Number six, 11 feet out, and he it. Attacking the paint again and again. You know, they're getting whatever they want. I mean, eight straight points coming inside. Third quarter here, over a minute and a half into it. Number seven, and the shot is good. Boy, just battled through that initial impact and somehow willed it in. Excellent concentration. That's what you like to see. Well, you talk about a guy who battles on every possession. I mean, he's definitely a guy I think of. How many times have we seen him go way out of his way to try to make a play? Yeah, I like the way he freely gives up his body to make a winning play, to make a play that helps his team. That speaks to me, to his competitive nature. Pacers trail by 14. Timeout called the Pacers. Seven. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. He'll take his third and fourth free throw shots at the game right here. Two shots. First one falls for him. That one misses, so he goes one for two. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. Second shot opportunity. Shot is off. One for five on offense. A slow start here in the second half. Number five. The Pacers pull it in. Ill-advised shot selection right there, Clark. 
It really was. I mean, very low percentage shot there. Number one. Drops it in from 11 feet. He's got 14. The away team call time. Well, last season with the condensed schedule, we saw teams really preserving their star players in the regular season, limiting their minutes. And frankly, I think it's something that should be done every season to save their energy for when it matters most. I think it's a good philosophy. Not quite two and a half minutes played here in the second half. And going back to what Clark was just talking about, an interesting stat over the last eight years, there have been almost 100 occasions of players who logged over 3,000 minutes in a season. And get this, none of those players, Steve, none of them went on to win a title. That's amazing, Kevin. And, and I think of Greg Popovich and his handling of Tim Duncan the last couple of years, limiting his minutes and allowing him to extend his career and the Spurs had another terrific season a year ago. So uh, I think it, it's something that you have to try to do as a coach. It's difficult because you don't want to lose your job, but you've got to be able to, to try to extend guys' careers and, and improve the quality of their play by cutting down their minutes. And the Pacers with possession here. Down by 15. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by gone four or six from the field since the start of the third number seven number 12 good on the jump shot he's got 11 they have a nice lead here and have really controlled the glass for the majority of the game Kudos to them for their strong effort on the backboard. Yeah, and they're sending a message too, Clark. They're really coming out and playing a very physical game here. That's where you like to get shots, inside and close to the hoop. Gotten five of eight shots to fall for them in the third quarter. A nice 62% for the field. Number 11. That drops. His team has to tighten up inside. Way too many easy hoops in the lane. Yep, that's five straight buckets they've given up from the key now, and it's it's hurting them. And it's the Pacers with the ball. 17-point game. Indiana moving the ball around. Number seven. Knocks down the three ball. 12 points for him. Gone six and nine from the floor here in the second half. They've got to be happy with that. Number five, from down in the low post, it goes. Man, offensive execution has been the story here, just playing beautiful basketball. And guys, you can see it in their advantage in field goal percentage. I mean, you get high quality shots, you're usually gonna shoot well. They're playing outstanding basketball. So both teams changing it up here. There's the dish to Thompson. There's a screen. Shot is blocked. Number seven. Good on the leaner. Nine points in the game so far. Pacers trail by 18. And the Pacers call time here. So both teams making some changes here. Green. Just five on the clock. Number seven. Well placed jumper from the free throw line. 
gotten eight of their 11 shots to drop since the break. A great third quarter for them offensively. One fifty-one left in the third. Down low, he goes up, and he finishes nicely on the way. He's got 10. He got a little room at the rim and laid it in. Great play. Number eight, again, Indiana. One twenty-two left in the third quarter. Number one, and that is good. One oh four left to play here in the third. They set the pick. Uncovered. They get the rebound. The feather touch on the finger roll. Beautiful. So far, going for more of an inside game here in this second half, and I like that. A little smash mouth basketball, taking it inside. Here's Bush. And it's off target. Not sure why he took that one. Pacers trail by 16. Six to shoot. It's tipped. High post try. Number 14. Gets it to go. He's got 10. Eight seconds left here in the third quarter. Got it off in time. And no luck. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be difficult to overcome. The away team, they lead by 14. And don't go away. We'll be back momentarily. While we're still getting underway here in the fourth, let's go down to Doris Burke, who has our Sprite Uncontainable Game Report. Doris? Hi, Kev. For the job this road team has done, they get our Sprite Uncontainable Game Award. A big push out of the break is what helped them build this lead, and right now they look to be in total control. If they can repeat that effort in the fourth, they'll walk away winners. Doris, thank you. And what a concerted effort they put together tonight. And, you know, that was really the uncontainable aspect in this game, Kevin. They got on the same page as a team and pretty much did what they wanted for the entire stretch. Well, clearly it's a different game without that scoring run. That was a game-changing run, no doubt. Number 11. That is good. Pacers trail by 16. Number 13. There's the bucket good. Kevin, too easy. I mean, the defenders were sort of looking at each other like, whose man was he? And everybody thought somebody else was going to guard him, and nobody did. Number seven. That is good. And we've played through about a minute here in the fourth. Ball's not loose. And here's the break. Number five. Good. Yeah, very opportunistic defense there leading to those points. That's exactly what they'll do to you, Steve. They will pounce on your mistakes. Pacer shooting so far very efficient all around. About 55%. Number one. That's good. Got such a good feel for his shot today in a really good groove gotten all three of their shots to drop here in the fourth quarter. They came out of the break on a roll. Just over a minute and a half played here in the fourth. Pacers trail by 16. Indiana moving it around. Lock at six. Indiana needs to get a shot off. 
Offline from the high post. Getting a mind-boggling 79% off the floor. Number 11. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. That's his first personal foul. At the line for the Rockets. Number 11. Taking two shots. The first free throw is good. All teams deciding to change it up. That one misses. Pacers trail by 17. Number seven. Solid play in the low block, and that one's good. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. Gone six for 14, so hovering just about 42% shooting here from the field. Here's Schultz. It's blocked. Shot clock at six. Number six. Gets it to go. Gone four for four from the field. Perfect so far. Defensive foul. That's his second personal foul. First team foul. Third minute of action now gone here in the fourth. There's the steal. That's his first turnover of the game. So for the most part, he's run the offense pretty well. Pulls up, high post. That's good on the jump shot. Pacers trail by 19. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. That's good. Gone 5 of 7 from the field since the beginning of the fourth. Strong work at that end of the floor. Six on the shot clock. Number 12. He trades it as the shot clock ticks down. The Pacers have gone an outstanding 4 of 5 from the field in the fourth quarter so far. Number 7. That's good. He did not look too happy about some of the things he saw on the court. So I would expect some changes here. I think it's the right move, quite honestly. I mean, they just didn't look sharp or at their best out there. So take the time out and give yourself a chance to regroup. So it's the visitors now. Number 12. Shot's good. You know, if their plan was to keep going inside a ton, it sure has paid off. I mean, it seems like every bucket they get is in the lane. Well, no reason to take an outside shot if you're scoring at will from inside the paint. And the Pacers with possession here. Trailing by 19. That's good. He's got 20. The visitors with the ball. Number seven. Off target from three-point range. The Pacers have gotten it done so far from the field here in the fourth. Going six for seven. A quick shot there and it's off target. Gone seven of ten shooting the ball since the start of the fourth quarter. Number 11, gets it to go from beyond the arc.
And the Pacers call time here. You know, it always takes three or four years to really evaluate a draft class, but you look back at that 2005 draft class now, that was just an amazing draft. Incredible depth, some great NBA players, uh, not only in the first round, but coming out of the second round as well. Pacers trail by 20. shot clock number six and the defense really pressing up on him made that a tough shot and just some of the names from the draft you mentioned bogan Bynum, chris paul darren williams steve all at the top but the depth was incredible yeah look at later on in that draft kevin david lee uh, picked by the knicks at the end of the first round and had guys in the second round like monte ellis marching board todd brandon bass lou williams Ultimately, that 2005 class turned out to be really, really strong. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. That's not his shot at all. Way too far beyond his range. Number seven takes the 12-footer and hits. Now, you can put this one in the W call. I mean, this is locked up now. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, they closed this game out exactly like they needed to. So it's the Pacers now. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Uh, if you settle for outside shots like that, you're going to have a hard time cutting into this lead. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you look at them this half, they haven't gotten to the free throw line as much. And it's in part because of their willingness to settle on offense. It's a matter of not just taking what's available. Good teams take what they want as far as shot selection. And the first one at the line is good. You know, the way it usually goes is if you're in the NBA, you were probably the best player on your team in college. But there are some exceptions to that. And there have been really quite a few NBA stars that weren't even considered the best player on their college teams. Kevin Love is a name that jumps out. And so he makes both from the line. As you mentioned, Steve, Kevin Love overshadowed a bit on his UCLA team by Darren Collison, but he certainly has blossomed. Well, I think that's going to be the case with a lot of young uh, freshmen who come into the NBA uh, based on potential more than production. They don't get a chance to uh, prove that they're the best player on the floor, uh, so you have to uh, sort of predict that they actually were the best player on the floor or that they were going to become that. And that's why a guy like Love was, even though he wasn't, you know, the guy at UCLA, you could tell he was about to become that. The Pacers making a switch here. And here are the Pacers now. Number eight. No good and tight defense there. Bothered that shot. Another board for them, and they've got a huge advantage in that regard. Yeah, it's not really a surprise. I mean, rebounding one of the true barometers in winning basketball games, and if you rebound better, you typically are going to win ball games and do it comfortably. The Pacers have gone 6 of 11 since the start of the fourth quarter. We've got a nine-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Indiana moving it around. Indiana again missing. Being an almost unfair 78% from the field. Number one hits the jump hook. And this one is just about over. It's going to be an easy win for them in the end. Yep, I think they can just about put this one on cruise control for the last few seconds here. Number eight. The visiting club takes the win on the road. You know, Clark, every team has a bad night, and these guys might want to watch the tape of this game the next time they have a bad night to remind themselves how dominant they can be. Well, this is one of those dreamlike games for a coach. 
Well, that'll do it for us for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke, Kevin Harlan saying so long. And as we end the game, we bring you our Jordan player of the game.